to share, my title of my message is The Gift That Keeps On Giving. And, you know, during this season, um, there's one word that is used probably more than ever, and it's not Mary, it's not even tree, it's not even Santa, and sadly, it's not even Jesus. It's the word gift. And by the end of November, or some of us start in July, we start our frantic, crazy rush for Christmas shopping, do we not? And that goes right on and up until Christmas Eve, which will probably be what I'm doing. And so the word gift consumes us for a month or two, doesn't it? And gift giving has become the central focus of our Christmas celebration. Who should we get gifts for? Uh, How much do we spend? Do we buy a gift for the boss? Yes. Uh, Do we just send money or gift cards um, to those that we don't see? And these questions can overshadow all the other aspects of the actual holiday season. And even if we try to limit our spending or cut down our list of people to shop for, gift giving still remains a vital part of Christmas. But I must admit, I love it because I am a gift giver and I love giving gifts and I love receiving gifts. So I did a little bit of a Google research to um, look up how this tradition started and historically why do we give gifts at Christmas and it's probably pretty obvious but you know. I... um, as I said, did some Google researching and some say it's a leftover from the pagan celebrations that when the early Christians decided on a date to celebrate the Mass for Christ, they decided on a date to coincide with the year-end celebrations of the Romans. And as part of these celebrations, they would, um, the people would prepare special foods and decorate their homes and um, join in with singing and gift giving. Others say that part of our tradition tells us that gift giving began at Christmas and it was started by the wise men when they brought gifts to baby Jesus. But today in our culture, people focus on another gift giver. Santa. What do you think when you hear the word Santa? I hear cringing, cringing and all that going on. What's so great about him? The element of surprise. He always comes. Generosity. Why does he give gift? He knows us so well. But you know, Santa Claus originated from the guy who was a real person known as Saint Nicholas. I'm sure we all know the story, but I'm going to tell us anyway. So Saint Nicholas was a 4th century Greek bishop and he was known for his generosity, especially to children in his village. And there's a famous story about him that in Nicholas's town, there was a poor man who had three daughters and he couldn't afford a proper dowry for them. And a dowry is um, money and goods that a father would use to give their daughters away to get married. And so this meant, because he had nothing, this meant that um, they would remain unmarried. How sad. So hearing of this poor man's story and situation... Nicholas, in the middle of the night, decided to help him out. But being too modest, he didn't want to embarrass this guy, let alone just didn't want the recognition himself. He went to his house under the cover of night and threw three purses, one for each daughter, filled with gold coins through the window opening into the man's house. When the father found out, he went to see Nicholas and thank him. But Nicholas's response was this, "'It's not me you should thank, it is God alone.'" I hope there's a St. Nicholas around when my girls get married off and someone throws gold coins in my window. That would be awesome. But, you know, Santa seems to get all the glory and all the recognition. And don't worry, I'm not going to go there because I know we all have different um, debates and is it right or wrong. But, you know, personally, at the end of the day, I think it's just a bit of good fun. And we've had fun with it in our household, but we've always made sure that our children know the true meaning of Christmas, have given Jesus Christ more credit, praise and celebrations and the fat man in the red suit. But I do love the original story of St. Nick, and we can learn from him about being generous, um, but obviously it's got way out of hand, totally commercialised and crazy now. But you know what? At the end of the day, God is bigger and greater, and we always have an opportunity to share about Jesus and the true meaning of Christmas. So let's look at the original and the greatest gift giver and the most generous person ever known to man, and that is our amazing God. It was definitely God who started it all when he gave the first Christmas gift. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. On the first Christmas, God gave the greatest gift of all. He gave his son. This is the start of gift giving right here. 
Jesus is the original and greatest Christmas gift. We only give because God first gave to us. You see, Christianity at its roots is based on acknowledgement that we have been blessed by God, blessed by the gift of grace on our lives or in our lives. And the only way we can respond to all of God's gifts he's given us is for us to give of ourselves to others and share what Jesus has given us. In other words, to have a spirit of generosity and to be gift givers. Jesus is the gift that needs to be kept on being given. It's the commandment of Jesus in Matthew twenty two thirty seven, which says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is the reason we give gifts as a response for the gift that he gave to us. Jesus gives us way more than we can fit into a box, way more than we can wrap up in a pretty package and put under the tree. Jesus gives the ability to love and to celebrate. He gives us the opportunity to share with one another and give others what he's given us. That's being generous. That is indeed a gift. That's the gift that needs to keep on giving. We don't need to spend money to show how much we love one another. Although, honey and kids, if you're listening, I love getting gifts. We don't need to outspend, outimpress, outdo everyone to prove our worth, to prove our value, and to prove our love. Um, a funny little story that I was prompted by as I was prepping this. Because my love language is gift giving, or one of them is, and acts of service, isn't it, honey? So I love it when people do things for me and when they buy me gifts. Don't I, honey? (laughs) So when I first met Brian, I was on a mission to make sure that he knew that I was the only person worthy of him to marry. And um, I would shower him in gifts. I had a full-time job. He was a poor POV Bible college student. And... um, I would spend so much money on him. Pretty much all my pay would go on. Come and meet me for lunch. I'd take him out for lunch and pay for him. I'd drive him around everywhere I had the car. And I just wanted to just spoil him and throw money at him and just love on him. And, um, you know, it was pretty cool. And then I was so excited for my first birthday gift thinking, oh, we went out for lunch. Yeah, you know where this is going. Yeah, you do that. And I was thinking, I'm going to get a really nice birthday present here. <coughs> And we're out for dinner at a restaurant with a heap of my friends and Brian sitting beside me and he passes over this little small gift and I thought, oh, that's all right, small's good, that's jewellery. Yeah, great. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And um, I opened it up and I learned a very valuable lesson that day. I opened it up and inside was the most ugliest, hideous of colours of this friendship bracelet that was bright green, bright yellow, bright red, none of the colours that I wear, joined together with plastic little things that you put together. And I looked at him and I could see he was like this, like so excited and I was like, who the heck is this guy I'm dating? And so everything within me had to go, thank you, that's so awesome. And then I was thinking, crap, now I have to actually wear this ugly thing to show my appreciation. So, but you know what? Brian definitely didn't outspend, outimpress, or outdo anyone. He knew that I knew that I loved him and he was all I needed, not some ugly, bright, coloured friendship band. <laughs> Thankfully, his, his um, friendship, uh, his gift giving's got better. <laughs> and his friendship. <laughs> because of Jesus and all he's given us, our gift of ourself. Our presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, is so much more valued than our presence, P-R-S-E-N-T-S, that we give. Did I spell that right? Besides, Jesus is enough of a gift for all. For, for all. You know, do I choose Jesus or ugly friendship band? Jesus, I choose Jesus. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. Sorry, honey. Jesus, God's presence among us is a gift to us all. As stated in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11, it says, To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This Saviour is born to you and to me, to us, Christ is born. 
This Christmas, let us give ourselves in a way that honours the gift of Jesus. Let's display a spirit of generosity to others. Let us celebrate his birth in the spirit of Jesus' life with love, joy, peace, hope, reconciliation and goodwill towards others. And may we rejoice in our salvation. The salvation that comes wrapped in a package as a little baby. Let us not wrap, stack, box, bag, tie or bundle Christmas, keeping it for ourselves. The true meaning of Christmas is to be shared. Jesus is for everyone. Let us give the gift of Christmas away, unwrapped with exuberant armfuls. Let us share, live out, merrily and responsibly, Christmas with overflowing hands, tireless steps and sparkling eyes. Christmas given away will stay fresh all year round. Christmas, you see, is far more than pretty little boxes under the tree. Christmas is a celebration of love, joy, peace, hope, reconciliation and goodwill. These are great gifts that we have received and can, can continue to give away. These are gifts that need to be kept on giving. But they're often the most difficult, especially if we've not received them from others. We wait for others to do something first. We dig in our heels and we decide we'll offer forgiveness, but only once they first make that first move or that first phone call. We'll show love, but only after they've sacrificed something. And I'll respond in goodness, but only after they start showing some kindness first. But let's be the starters of these incredible gifts that Jesus has given to us. The gifts of Christmas should not be kept to ourselves. They can only be experienced when given away. So here's a few quick generous gifts we can give away anytime. But let's start now at this Christmas season as we remember the greatest gift we've ever received. So the first gift given freely to us and needs to be kept on given is love. Everyone say love. That's beautiful. John 15, 12 says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Christmas is a season of love. A celebration of sacrificing what we have to show appreciation to show appreciation to those who mean the most. And while expressing love to one another may be the most beautiful thing we can ever do, it can also be one of the most difficult, especially when those around us who should love us and then they withhold it. But can I encourage us? Choose love anyway. True love is not self-seeking. It keeps no record of wrong and demands nothing in return. Gift number two to give away is joy. Everyone say joy. Didn't you love that little movie? Joy. I love it. So good. You can't say joy sad, can you? Joy on the movie, the video thing. You with me, honey? Great. This world never allows for perfect circumstances always. And those who wait to find joy in them never will. It's not wise to base our happiness fully on the actions of others, but that doesn't mean we can't bring a little joy into the life of others by the things we do and the words that we say. We can still be intentional about spreading joy wherever we go. Romans 15, 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow. That's not selfish and keeping for ourselves. That's Overflow means it's coming out of us with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Gift number three, peace. Once one of the most sought after gifts is peace in our world today. I don't know how many people I run into and they just need peace. You know, family and personal relationships can cause conflict, turmoil and stress at any time. But why is it that it's most tense around when it's heightened during holiday seasons and times like this. Ever notice that? But, you know, can we, let's offer the gift of peace this Christmas by taking the first step, step. One phone call or conversation may not make amends for years of damage or hurt, but at least it's the first step that needs to get taken by somebody. Let us choose to be a peacemaker. The fourth gift to give away is hope. Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my most favourite verses, is, is, says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and hope. Hope is one of the greatest assets in the entire world. It's one of the greatest treasures that we can ever find for ourselves and for others. 
It's a great gift that we can share and give and offer someone else. Always see the good in others. Believe in their greatest potential. Encourage often and give hope. And gift number five is reconciliation. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. You know, at the very heart of the Christmas story, it's a story of reconciliation. A baby was born to offer us forgiveness. And in the same way, this season creates opportunity for us to offer forgiveness to others and to those who need it in their lives. And again, let us be the ones to take the first step. Even before an apology has ever been uttered, we can lay the foundation for reconciliation that makes it possible to forgive. And the last gift we can give out is the gift of goodwill. People may desire to harm us, but wishing pain and suffering upon them in response only compounds the hurt. Harbouring resentment, ill will and bitterness in our hearts allows their actions to control us. On the other hand, wishing goodwill upon those who hurt us frees our soul and it allows us to move on to better things. These are some of the greatest gifts for Christmas and we should give them freely and generously because of Christ in us and all that he's given us. Maybe the greatest gifts we can give during Christmas are these very things that we most desire to receive ourselves. If I can have the music team come up, that would be awesome. As we share and give, others get to enjoy what God has given us. Their needs are met and they have what they might not have had otherwise because of you and Christ in you. They are introduced to the loving generosity of the one true living God through his people having a spirit of generosity and allowing the gift to be kept on being given. Others benefit, but we also get joy. It may seem sweet to get, get, get for Christmas, but you know, the Bible promises, promises us over and over again. It is more blessed and sweeter to give than receive. That's in Acts 20 verse 34. It's how God's world works. As we give what's ours to bless and serve others, we know and feel more of what Christ has given us in full forever by serving us on the cross. Jesus came not to serve, but to serve. Not to be served, but to serve. And give, I'm glad you're all awake. That was a test. And to give his life as a ransom for many. The role model for our Christmas celebrations became a ransom for us and we enjoy more of him when we give like he gives. And sweetest of all, God actually gets a kick out of us when, or kick out of it, when we share, when we have a spirit of generosity. Hebrews 13, 16 says this, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. I don't know about you, but I like to please people. But more than anything, I want to please God. And it says it right there. Share what you have and it pleases God. When our giving and our hope flows freely into the lives of others, God rejoices. He takes pleasure when we provide for others and are generous towards others. He loves to lavish his children with things that allow them to love others in turn. So multiply your love your joy, your peace, your hope and goodwill by sharing it this Christmas. Let all that you've ever received in Christ, every good thing you have, be the reason to pass along to others, increasing your joy and pleasing the giver, Jesus Christ. Help the gift of Jesus keep on being given this Christmas season and beyond.